Greetings, I'm Jason and welcome to my comic book reviews. Um, it's a massive week this week, 19 books I picked up. Uh, if I did my usual style where I take about 3 minutes on each book, uh, this would be a very long video. So I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible this week. I'll still say what I think of each book, I won't kind of shrimp on anything, but I'll try and be more concise to the point and hopefully this video we can keep as close to 20 minutes as possible. Fingers crossed. So let's get on with the show. We kick things off with, from DC Comics. It is Batman Eternal issue number 18. I the last couple of issues I haven't really been enjoying of this, but this issue I thought was a return to form. Um, I've just not really been feeling the Arkham Asylum story. Where this issue we deal with uh, Batman and Lieutenant Bard and Killer Croc all team up to search for a killer in Gotham, while meanwhile in Brazil. Uh, Red Hood, uh, Batwoman and Batgirl, they continue to try and find the person that they think has framed Commissioner Gordon, or the former Commissioner Gordon. We even get a brief glimpse of James Gordon in prison. Um, all in all, I really enjoyed this. The art uh, here by, I think the artist's name was Clark, Andrew Clark. It's good. Yeah, Andy Clark, who does the art, does a really bang up job with the art. The story is really good. Uh, all stories that I'm really invested in and caring about. So I really enjoyed this. I particularly loved the banter between Bard and Killer Croc. I thought that was some really good writing there. And and also the characterization of Red Hood, Batwoman and, and Batgirl I, I liked as well. All in all, a really enjoyable issue. And I give Batman Eternal issue number 18. Five stars out of five. So next up, jumping over to Marvel, and we have four on Loki, the 10th round, issue number three. Or is it Original Sin 5.3? I haven't a clue. Uh, I'm just completely clu clueless with the numbering and how that works. But the actual issue itself was really good. Uh, we get a lot of the history of the angels of heathen. And I really like how they're like, going back to like the mythology of human beings seeing angels. I really like that they're from this 10th round. Uh, that's something that I really think has been a good idea for Marvel. Um, so yeah, we get the history of them, how they had the big falling out with Asgard and their relationship with Midgard. So I really loved like, getting all that history and it was some really good stuff. Um, then we get the modern day stuff, which I like the usage of two artists. One to do the art in Heaven and the other artist to do the other stuff. I thought that was really good. Um, the modern day stuff I didn't feel quite as much. Um, particularly the way the book ended, um, I was a bit like, okay... Um, I, I didn't like that. I, I didn't like that when it happened before. Uh, but so, we'll, but we'll see where it goes. Um, but yeah, so for me, I think the star of this issue was definitely the history. And I'd give four and Loki the tenth round issue number three, four stars out of five. Next up, we have She-Hulk issue number seven. Uh, with the return of Javier Pulido. Uh, so great to have him back. Sometimes people have to leave and come back before you can appreciate them and um, his two issues away definitely made me appreciate the man a lot more. Really like this issue. You have these two partners who have got this new technology to that can shrink things and they're going to use it to help people deliver packages cheaper by shrinking the package down and then resizing it. But they, they are in disagreement whether they want to sell the technology or not. So She-Hulk has to come in because the one has hidden himself away, shrunken himself down. So She-Hulk, Al Cat, and Hank Pym go in search of this guy. And it's a really fun story. Um, how the world changes and suddenly becomes more dangerous as they've shrunken down was brilliant. I love the dialogue here between um, Al Cat and She-Hulk. And, and I just really love how they've written She-Hulk in this book. And Charles Soule continues to do a great job. Uh, really enjoyable uh, one and done story and I, I'm loving this and I give She-Hulk issue number 7 5 stars out of 5. Sticking with Marvel we have a Black Widow issue number 9. This is a kind of a crossover with Punisher um, but I like how they've done it and more about that a bit later when I review Punisher. But this issue I really enjoyed. Um, Black Widow trying to find clues to find this organization in chaos. And it leads her to this this ship. Um, I really love the story. And you know there's plenty of action in here. But for me the, the high point of the issue. Is the cliffhanger at the end. Which just really got me. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where that's going to go. 
uh, the art from Phil Nato remains fantastic and yeah this was a, a really fun issue and a really return to form because again the last two issues of this I had not really been feeling so yeah I really enjoyed this and it felt like we were back on track and I give Black Widow issue number 9 5 stars out of 5 so next up the Punisher and it's a clever way that they've done this kind, this this crossover is that it tells the same story but from two different perspectives. So in Black Widow we get the story from Black Widow's perspective, and in Punisher we get the story from Punisher's perspective. I also really love that cover and the way that the spider and is on there, and then the Punisher looks like further back. Really love that cover. And uh, the story itself. A slight gripe because, like, Punisher can't catch a break at the moment. He starts a story in captivity and he ends it in captivity. Uh, but it's a fun ride of how he gets there. I really enjoyed the inner monologue that we get with Punisher. Um, and, and I'm still enjoying this book. Uh, it was a fun story. Didn't blow me away. I think I enjoyed the Black Widow part of the story better than the Punisher side. And the Punisher issue number 9, 4 stars out of 5. So next up, back to DC, uh, and it is Swamp Thing issue number 34. Another really good issue, as we kind of, the story with Jonah, uh, Madam, um, is it Madam Weeds? And Wolf comes to a head. Um, again, this was a good issue. I did feel things kind of wrapped up a bit quickly. I thought Madam Weeds would have come out with a bit of a more long-term plan. Um, so I was a bit disappointed that things resolved themselves so quickly i love the kind of what happened to wolf that was really good and how they built to the reveal i thought was really good story writing uh the art once again was really good um i'm really enjoying swamp thing at the moment it's just become a really great book i enjoyed it under snyder but it's got even better under soul he's doing such great things with this character and again another really good cover as well um and kind of the resolution of the story i enjoyed and i liked um, even though it did for me feel a bit rushed and it gives something issue number 34 four stars out of five Next back up to Marvel. We have legendary star Lord issue number 32. Sorry issue two. Sorry um, This was really good I really enjoyed like star Lord here and kind of the, the how the story goes and it kind of it shows Star Lord that yeah he's a bit salty, he's a bit of a con man, but he's he's generally a good guy, um, and I, I that's the thing I really like about about him. I also really like the direction of the story. I don't know what went down, whether it was during Infinity that stuff went down, or if it was er, earlier, but certainly I'm really looking forward to the direction of where this book is going. Loved seeing his sister, and I'm hoping we'll see more of that later on. Um, but yeah, it was just a really fun issue, and you know, once again, and I'm I'm just really enjoying the heck out of anything Guardians of the Galaxy related at the moment. They've they've all keep that same tone, and I'd give Legendary Star Lord issue number two five stars out of five. Next up, we have Alex and Ada from Image Comics issue number eight. This was just fantastic. Um, the writing in here is just first class. The dialogue is first class. It feels so real. This, the future is like you could it, it's just advanced enough that it feels like the future but it's still recognizable enough for us to, in the present uh, I really liked where this story went and the direction they're taking Ada's character in it is something that I'm really liking because the, this the whole thing it's like letting the genie out of the buckle you don't know what you were going to get when you gave her her sentence when you gave her free will and so I'm really looking forward to where this book's going. I'm hoping as it goes on, we do get to see the larger world and maybe get more caught up in what's going on with the androids, the robots and everything out there. And we get a little, little bit more of what's been teased from this company that built them. Because you do get that something went on, but we don't know exactly what yet. Uh, I'm really liking the character of Alex. He's a very honourable man. And I like that, and I really like Ada as well, because in many ways she's almost like a child in the way that she's learning and she's taking everything in. And, you know, you always, as you learn, you make mistakes, and I think that's the one thing that she hasn't learned yet. 
um, that you know you make mistakes and you just get off and dust yourself off and get on with it but I'm just really enjoying this book uh, it's so engrossing and I just really enjoy every issue and I give Alex and Ada issue number eight five stars out of five Next up, my pick of the week, it is Rocket Raccoon, issue number two. I was super thrilled to see issue number one was the Top Sun comic for July. Um, I think it goes to show that people, they want comics that are fun. Uh, I, I think that's one thing comic companies, they bring a lot of serious comics out. But we want more fun comics. And I think you look at the success of this, and I've not read it, but the success of Harley Quinn, which I understand is kind of like a fun book, I think shows that people want good quality fun books out there and um, this was just as great as the first issue probably even better um i i just really enjoyed this the tone of it it very much captures the tone of the movie so if you've seen the film and you kind of want to explore the guardians of the galaxy this is a great book to pick up the relationship between him and groot is very much as uh, as it is in the film and i love that and there's this great montage of him trying to escape from prison with them talking and Groot keeps saying I am Groot and Rocket's carrying on like they're having a full conversation which I just really love that uh, there were some funny laugh out moments spread throughout this book um, loads of action but at the same time you've got storyline developments going on and so far I've just found this book a lot of fun uh, the art I've got to show you the double page spread where they're escaping prison it is just really well done here it is um, really really well done But yeah, this, this book, I'm just really enjoying this at the moment. And I'd give Rocket Raccoon, issue number two, is my pick of the week. So back over to DC, we have the New 52 Futures End, issue number 14. And this was a mixed bag. This is the epitome of a mixed bag. It started off really strong with the showdown with Emiko and Bada going up against... Uh, 50 Sue and Deathstroke. And that was really good, that cat encounter. We then kind of in the middle of the book we have this confusion showdown with the Batman from the future and like last week he got knocked out and betrayed and now they're kind of arguing whether the person who betrayed him once says they need him on their team and you're thinking well, well why did you betray him then if you need him? Um, I, I just didn't get that. I thought that that was not that good. And then we have a bit with Cadmus Island which really we have a few pages of it and it doesn't really advance that story any further we don't learn anything more than we already knew so it was like well what was the point of that bit of the story um but then we end the story with some great lois lane stuff that really pushes her story and ends the issue on a high and really um fans of earth 2 this is an issue to pick up because it really is beginning to get more into like the aftermath of the war with earth 2 and with the people that are left and so yeah i really enjoyed this issue the beginning and the end of it but the middle not so much so i'd give this book future's end issue number 14 three stars out of five then next up we have iron fist the living weapon uh, i'm still really loving this book i love like seeing a book where you've got a guy that it's, it's his complete vision i i really love that I love that the fact that the scenes, the flashback scenes, the way that they're drawn, there's something about the paper that they do to the paper. Let me see if I can, oh here we go. I don't know if you can see on the video, I don't know if my video, but you've got like these lines on the paper, so it, it looks like it's old, like it's old compared to like the, the modern day stuff where where look you don't have those lines so yeah um the art in the book i really love uh, i love the t all the stories are moving forward um my one gripe would be like the monster i was is it the one i still didn't understand were we supposed to know what it was or are we still supposed to be a bit clueless uh because i personally was still clueless but I love the stories, they all moved on, there's some really great moments in here and I'm just loving this book and I think as well I love how we're getting the history of Iron Fist and how he became Iron Fist and his decisions and his choices in his life. We're getting a lot of the history of the character as well as the modern day stuff which as for somebody who's new to the character like me, I'm really enjoying. So yeah, I'd give Iron Fist the living weapon, issue number 5, 4 stars out of 5. We then have Batman Detective Comics issue number 34. 
Um, this one was a bit confusing, and I don't know if it's because we had the annual last week, which so kind of served as the prequel to the story we've been following in here, or whether it's just that, you know, I've kind of forgotten bits of the story, but yeah, I was a very confused with this one, this issue. Uh, really confused who the, the dude who they're getting the Icarus from, I've totally forgotten, and I think probably I need to go back and read it. Um, I'm still really loving the Bullock stuff, I think that's really been cool. And also the art in here is just fantastic. Um, but yeah, everything as well seemed to wrap up a bit quickly. And I never really took to the um, to the daughter. Uh, even at the end, I, I just didn't really take to her character. But yeah, um, the art in here though is, is for me is the best thing because you know it is superb but yeah so yeah all in all again this this issue maybe i'll appreciate it more when i reread the entire arc but i'd give detective comics issue 34 three stars out of five we then move on to from omni press the bunker issue number five and this was just all kinds of brilliant some fantastic twists in the tail here um i i loved kind of how they're dealing and they're coming to terms with like the question of like well We've got to let this big bad thing happen for good things to happen because otherwise the whole planet's going to be destroyed anyway. So it's so I really like the kind of issues they're kind of juggling here, and it really is a thought-provoking kind of book. But then there's some fantastic twists that just give the story again another perspective. Um, a fantastic book. You, there is an advert in the back for the first trade. Um, always puzzles me why they put the because surely you, if you're buying this book you'd have already got the trade or the single issues but look you can get the trade uh, volume one so yeah uh, it's definitely worth picking up this has been a fantastic book so far really enjoying Fialkov's writing the dialogue is just always so great and feels so real and yeah this is just a superb book the art as well uh, remains uh, top notch um, I don't really want to spoil I can't really show the art because it might spoil kind of some stuff but uh, yeah this this book just remains an absolute joy and I give the bunker issue number 5 5 stars out of 5 we then jump on to Grayson uh, issue number 2 from DC Comics and um, this is a character I've got no previous history with but I'm really enjoying this book um, I really like in the character of Dick Grayson and I'm really thinking becoming a fan I can understand why the character is so popular I'm also really enjoying you know the fact that it's set in England which I, I, I can understand why so many books are set in America the comic companies are based there the largest market are based there a lot of the writers at least traditionally are based there so I can understand but it's still I think it's nice when you've got a book set somewhere else because it can give the book a totally different vibe and a totally different look and that's what this does I like the structure of this issue it reminds me a lot of how you would have a television episode where you would have uh, a series where there might be an overarching story but each week they might have a different mission and that's kind of what this the first two issues of this has been we've each had a different mission but each week has kind of built as well into that overarching bigger story so so by doing that it makes each issue accessible from the point that it's each a standalone mission but then at the same time if you're reading it long term you'll see the overarching story so yeah i'm just really impressed at the heck out of um i i i love the art i didn't realize there were three artists on the book um until afterwards um so, th so that was a bit that was a bit strange but um but yeah um it didn't really affect my enjoyment because i just really love in this book this book definitely um continues being this it will be this good i will add it to my poor list uh, but i'm at the moment i'm just buying it issue by issue but i give grace then issue number two a definite five stars out of five we then moving back over to image we have issue number two of spread um I was a bit confused at the beginning of this book. We get this blonde guy. Um, I remember a blonde guy from the last issue being dead. So I don't know if this bit is a, like a flashback bit. Uh, because certainly all the stuff kind of looks like what we saw before. 
Um, we have a bit with him, and then we rejoin our main story with No and with Baby Hope, and he's kind of trying to 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 get her to be quiet. And he comes across these slavers, and they've got this woman who she must have lost her child because she's a bit gone a bit mad in the head. But he can see that milk is coming from her breasts, and he and this he needs some of this milk. Um, he then tries to to rescue her. And, but then this spread worm shows up. Um, it is a really good. I'm really enjoying this. I really. Um, I love the art and the way the color palette use they use. So it makes the spread stand out even more. I'm loving the story. I'm loving how we're building this world. I was a bit confused with the beginning, but everything else about this book I really enjoyed. And it gives spread issue number two four stars out of five. Then next up, um, we have Superior Spider-Man, issue number 32, um, which I really enjoyed this book, and it kicks off the Edge of Spider-Verse event, which if, if it's all going to be as good as this, I'm really on board. Um, basically, this if we go back to issue 19, where the Superior Spider-Man, our Doc Ock Spider-Man, disappeared for a bit, and then came back, and this is kind of filling in where he went, which I just, which just remains to show what a great writer Dan Slott is, how he can like kind of forward plan things so much. Um, I'm real big admiration for him as a writer. Um, the issue itself as well is really good as kind of the, the superior Spider-Man uncovers that through these different realities, somebody is hunting out Spider-Man and killing him in all these different realities. And then when you see how he deals with it to kick off this event, is just brilliant. Um, I just really enjoyed this book. Um, you've got two stories here, one written by, by Slot, one written by uh, Greg Gage, and an art from Cameron Carly and Kubert. Uh, just a really good book, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a 499 book, but it kicks off the event really nicely. And I give Superior Spider-Man, issue number 32, 5 stars out of 5. So we just got three books left now, so we're nearly there, just over the 20 minute mark. So we're not going to do 20 minutes, but not bad considering I've got so many books to, that I fitted it in for this long. Uh, next up we have Hulk vs Iron Man, issue number 4. This concludes the miniseries. Um, I really like how they conclude this. Um, at the beginning, we were, I was one of the many who was like, I don't really like them messing with Hulk's origin. And they haven't really, at the end of the day, the way they've done it is very clever. There's a couple of really nice twists in this issue that really bring the story to a head really nicely. I like that this issue, we didn't get, it was an all or big fight. Some of it was just the two guys sitting down talking, and I liked that. I, I really liked that. I thought that was a nice change to kind of conclude a conflict just by sitting down and talking about it. Um... I also really love the art this issue. It is Luke Ross. I, let me make sure. Okay. Yeah, Luke Ross. And I just thought he did a really, really good job with with, with the art here. And I wouldn't mind seeing him getting a run uh, on the Hulk. I loved how he drew the Hulk. Um, yeah, I really liked his art. But yeah, this was a really satisfactory conclusion. And I kind of liked how we get the second twist. And it makes the story of the Hulk even more tragic, which it, th that was just brilliant. And I love how they dealt with all this. And this has been a really good book. And a real lesson in that before we as comic book fans complain about something, maybe we should actually wait until it happens and then speak on it. Because I, I really like what they've done here. And I give Hulk vs. Iron Man issue number 4, 5 stars out of 5. So, the Panorama book this week from Image is Clone, issue number 9, 19, sorry. Um, this is probably the weakest issue we've had uh, in a while of this book. And that's not saying that it's a bad issue. It's just for Clone, the book moves at such a, a pace and everything moves forward. This is the first time where some of the stories are moving a bit slow. The whole cabin story, we kind kind of some of an element of it comes to a head, but there's still a lot of it that hasn't really moved forward at the end of this issue. So that story feels like it stalled a bit. Uh, we then got the Laura and the baby, and that story um, doesn't really seem to advance that much. You see, as much as you, you things usually do, 
Uh, certainly for me, the highlight of this issue was the story with the tattooed clown who's going to blow up this coalition uh, because of these churches that believe the clowns are an abomination, that God created man and man should not create man, that that's blasphemy. So they want to kill all these clowns. And they um, and so like the reverend who's in charge of this group, um, the tattooed clown is going to blow him up. But then there's a twist at the end. Uh, but that for me was the highlight of the whole issue. Like I say, it is a good issue, but it's just not as great as, it, as it's been. And to give clone issue number 19, four stars out of five. So now, our final book. It is Green Arrow, issue number 34. And sadly, this is the last issue for this current creative team. Uh, but I just want to say a big thank you, because Green Arrow has been one of my favourite characters. And I was heartbroken to see what had happened to the book when they brought him back. And how rubbish this book was. Even as a big Green Arrow fan, I could not read it. I, I it was just trash. And I'm really, really been pleased to see how they've brought this character back, how they've repaired the character, and how they've not just made this this one of the best books from DC, but one of the best books in comics. Full stop. Um, so yeah, I want to say a massive thank you to all the creative team on this book. Uh, this issue I thought wraps things up nicely. Things come to a head in some of the stories, like the showdown with Richard Dragon, I felt was a bit anticlimactic um, at the end. But other than that, I thought this wraps up everything really nicely. I like the overarching kind of thing of that, that Green Arrow isn't alone, that he's got this support network there, which I really liked. And, you know, again, the art, as always, you'd expect from the book, is great. And I like that we leave a couple of threads open to pick up later on, but... Um, a satisfactory conclusion of all, and I'd give Green Arrow issue number 34, four stars out of five. So, those are my reviews, uh, done. About 26 minutes, uh, which is not too bad when you consider I had 19 books to do this week. That, that I think that's pretty good. Um, I will be back next week with my comic haul video. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video, really appreciate it. Uh, please tell me if you agree, disagree with any of my, my comment, comments on these books. Let me know in the comments below. Um, uh, so yeah, that leaves me to say is thank you very much for watching. And I will be back next week with another haul video and another review video. I've been Jason. This has been my kind of reviews. Bye for now.